Hey, how's it going, Internet? This is James Bodie, and you're watching Relative Motion, a channel all about teaching you the best means from point A to point B. We are starting to reach the end of Season 1 here, where we're taking a look at the best piston-powered helicopters on the market today. And in this episode, we're taking a look at probably my personal favorite, the Ingstrom F-28FX. Because the FX model might just be my personal favorite piston helicopter you can get today. And in this video, I want to show you why. So like I was saying, the Ingstrom F-28 is what I think is the best all-around piston helicopter, but unfortunately it's never been that popular. Now this helicopter is getting pretty close to the size of a Robinson R-44. However, the biggest difference between this and the 44 is this still only has one row of seats, where the Robinson R-44 is really the only helicopter on this list that actually has two rows of seats. And that's going to be the helicopter we're going to look at in the next episode. However, even though it only has one row of seats, it is still very roomy, and especially if you're only flying it with two people. Because just like the Schweitzer 300 that was the episode before this, this one can actually seat three people up front, and has a large bench seat to make this possible. This helicopter, also like the Schweitzer 300, this one is typically flown from the left hand side. However, if I'm being really honest here, on these small helicopters, they can be pretty easily flown from either side. Mostly because these don't have very large instrument panels, and they're usually sitting smack dab between both pilots anyways. One of the interesting features the Ingstrom has, which I've never really seen on another helicopter, is the main rotor flight controls actually come right up through the mast, and are not exposed on the outside. I'm not really sure what benefit this provides, other than maybe a cleaner look, and potentially they're a little less exposed to the elements. However, you might have to be concerned about keeping that area pretty clean. A feature I personally like about this helicopter, which does take away from the aesthetics a little bit, is the fact that this helicopter in particular, the wheels are usually left on. And like I had mentioned in the last video, because of these helicopters' small size, I think it's a pretty nice feature that the wheels can stay on, because that's one last thing you gotta carry inside if you're gonna need to be able to move it around on the ground wherever you land. Like for example, if you want to put it in a hangar. Another reason I'm really big on this helicopter is I do think it looks pretty good especially compared to the R44 or the Schweitzer 300. I'd say probably the only helicopter that looks better than this one is the Cabri G2. But again, make your own decision, because of course looks are objective. And I'd probably sound like a broken record on this one, but again because this has a three-bladed rotor head, it's fully articulated, and is generally the more safe and modern design. However, on this helicopter, Ingstrom advertises this as a higher inertia rotor system, which is going to mean it takes more power to increase or decrease the rotor RPM. And the major advantage to this is in the sense of safety, because if your engine quits and you do have to go into an auto rotation, the higher the inertia of the rotor system, the more time you have to go into the auto rotation, which is definitely a feature that can't be overstated. Because you might not like hearing this, but in that situation, if you don't go into an auto rotation, you will just fall right out of the sky. Just very quickly, I think saying this is a high inertia rotor system is a little misleading, because there really isn't a cutoff point for a low versus high inertia system. The system is more of a sliding scale, so there's lighter and heavier inertia rotor systems. And the inertia largely has to do with the fact of just how big the helicopter is. Because a lot of these are the tiniest helicopters, they're going to have the lowest inertia rotor systems. So in reality, this Ingstrom F-28's rotor system is going to be more like a medium inertia rotor system, if you even want to say there is such a thing. Just because, again, this helicopter is small size, relatively speaking. These helicopters are one of the older helicopters on this list too, which again I think adds to the reliability this helicopter has. However, I wouldn't say this helicopter is necessarily as widespread use as the other ones on this. It's just never taken off as that popular of a helicopter. This helicopter has had two crashes due to mechanical failures. However, those issues have been addressed now, just like whenever that happens in aviation, and would feel very safe flying in this machine. The really appealing feature, I think, to this helicopter is it has the largest cargo area in the rear. So realistically, you can actually fly three people around in this helicopter and actually bring some stuff with you, which is definitely not attainable by most helicopters on this list. 
It also, like the Schweitzer 300, which I suppose I forgot to mention in the last video, has split fuel tanks on both sides, which I'm not going to sit here and say is some wildly great feature, but is one I kind of like just for the fact it can make weight and balance a little easier, especially if you want to get fancy trying to get your center of gravity as close to where you want it as possible. You can split the fuel when you're filling up the tanks exactly how you want it to achieve this effect. Now the last and probably coolest feature of this helicopter is the fact it actually has a turbocharged engine, but not all the F-28 models have this feature, so be aware of that. Now the reason this is particularly useful in an aircraft, besides the fact it's just cool I think, this allows the helicopter to climb to higher altitudes than it normally could. This is because as you go up, the air gets less dense, which means you require more of it to create the same power you did before out of your engine. And what a turbocharger does is actually compresses the air before it enters the engine, thus in an essence canceling that effect out. So your engine's allowed to make power up to higher altitudes, which obviously in something that flies, you could see why that would be particularly advantageous. So to me this is kind of the sports car helicopter on this list, and it does have a fairly good cruise if you do get the later models with the larger engine and turbocharge like I mentioned. However, it's not the fastest helicopter on this list, and I definitely have to tip my hat to the R44, which is the one we're going to talk about next, and that helicopter is definitely the fastest piston-powered helicopter there is. The last thing to be aware of on this helicopter is this chopper doesn't come with a governor, which I definitely have to admit I would say is a disadvantage if you are going to use this as your personal helicopter, because that's going to become annoying after a while. However, I will mention here, later on it became an option for this helicopter to be equipped with a throttle correlator. Now a throttle correlator is not a governor, however it's the next best thing to one because it does keep the throttle and rotor RPM somewhat matched and only will require minor adjustments instead of the major adjustments that would be required if this was not present and there was no governor. Now just like the Schweitzer 300 developed into a turbine powered Schweitzer 333, Engstrom eventually did come out with a small turbine helicopter modeled after the Engstrom F-28, and this one just like the Schweitzer version is one of the smallest turbine helicopters there is, and really is a great machine, and I'm sure this channel will have an episode on it when we talk about the best small turbine helicopters, so continue to look for that one if it sounds interesting. So maybe you even disagree with me, and you think this helicopter is more popular than I do, or maybe you even have a different favorite for a personal piston helicopter, and I'd be interested to know why down in the comments below because I won't disagree with you I think the R44 is a great helicopter and it's gonna be the last one we're gonna look at in this season of the best piston powered helicopters on the market so make sure you don't miss that last one and until next time I'm James Bodie and you've been watching Relative Motion Let's take